See that? Those are actually components instead of grime. So I've um, got on and cleaned this as much as I can for now. It took an inordinate amount of alcohol and cotton swabs and all sorts of things to get this into a more presentable state or at least a state when in which one feels like doing the repair and it's come out quite well surprisingly it cleaned up pretty well most of the grime was actually surface grime and with a a paintbrush a very small paintbrush lots of alcohol lots of cotton swabs this is where I've got it to it's by no means uh, as clean as I want to get it but it's pretty pretty much good enough to to start doing the repair on make sure we can get this thing to work I took the faceplate off and I did do a cleanup job on the on the knobs which are as good as new right now pretty amazing the piano keys well there's no magic you can do on a broken one but they've cleaned up well all shiny I've lubed some of these pulleys I'm fortunate in that the dial cords are fine both the FM1 and the AM these fly leads here to the tube type socket have been cleaned up if you recall all we saw here was dust the transformers have been cleaned up as well so it's looking more presentable and I think it's now ready to go onto the operation table one thing I've already done is um, I've swapped out the power cord for a three core three cable cord with ground if you recall one of the faults in the uh, initial tests of the power transformer which I thought was the fuse which is in this thing here turned out to not be the case the fuse was fine it was actually a solder joint on one of the power cords so because I had to resolder that I decided to change the power cord out and obviously I'm not powering it powering it up yet I think I'm a little bit away from that but um, at least the three prong cord is in place here's the back of the radio you can see the effects of the cleanup that old style PC board is now visible and this is the FM section which still has quite a bit of dirt in there but I'm very very afraid of getting too rough on it because some of these coils have minute little wires on them and if I brush them with any kind of force I'm gonna break them and there's nothing worse than trying to repair that You see that little wire there I do not want to get that mixed up and torn apart same applies to that section of the board little coil filament wires everywhere so I had to be very very careful with that and now we come to the fun bit those are not blobs of molasses those are actually capacitors that have melted these are two examples of the type of caps and the cap damage that I found in this radio 
This thing has obviously been stressed either with uh, excessive voltage or just with age and heat, probably more heat. And uh, this is what's happened to some of the caps. These two have completely melted away. And um, I'm going to have to do more than just replace the caps. There's obviously quite a bit of cosmetic repair to be done when I try and remove them. You can see more evidence of heat damage when we look a bit closer. If you look at that capacitor there, I would guess that that's the electrolytic cathode, bi cathode cap uh, from the uh, EL84. That thing is burnt. So heat has had quite a bit to do with this, I'm sure. I've seen other signs of it as well. There's another one that's melting away down there. And when we look at this end, behind the EL84, take that out. You can actually see that a wire is become bare over there. That's heat damage. The wires have all discolored. Even after trying to clean them I can see they're discolored. And uh, that particular one is actually melted away. Although there's still continuity it seems, but the sleeving is completely melted away. So again, signs of heat damage. Don't see too much of that on the FM section. But then again, there's no power tubes nearby. My guess is that the EL84 output tube, when heating up, um, had that effect on all the components nearby, probably because of poor ventilation on this. Now, this radio I've found is actually a chassis that was used in various models. This one is the Comedia 616, but when looking for data on it, I found references to a Polka 815, I believe it is, and a Cantonetta 615 or something like that. And the comments are that it's the same chassis, different cabinet. And that this particular one, the Commedia, was the smallest cabinet. And it was intended as a small radio. So that it would fit more easily in somebody's home or wherever. So they made the uh, cabinet a lot smaller. And that obviously had an effect on the uh, cooling inside. And I guess that's what would cause that kind of problem. These capacitors are directly above the hot airflow of the uh, EL84. And that's probably why they, they melted away. So, next stage. Next stage is to do some recapping. I'm going to follow my usual procedure, which is to work backwards from power supply first get the power supply working, then the power amp section working, test that with the signal into the phono input, which is at the back here. Um, once that is done, then I work backwards on the schematic all the way to the RF section through the AF or intermediate uh, frequency section and then all the way to the RF section. And uh, the reason I like to do this is um, at least it gives you an idea of where you're going and how well you're doing along the way. You also tend to hear things improve as you go along, as you start uh, or continue to swap out caps and check for component values and so on. Now, obviously, this all assumes this is all assuming this thing even powers up. And before I power up, I definitely have to do a bit of checking and replacing in the at least the PA section, the power amp section, and the power supply. And uh, after that, then, I think uh, this will be ready to be powered up with the lamp dimmer system. 
make sure we don't blow anything up. So my work's cut out for me. Time to get going. <laughs>